Here's Brody Brazil. You know, it's been a while since I've done a video like this and a breakdown of Las Vegas media coverage as it relates to the A's and potential relocation to Southern Nevada. Look, I've been wanting to do more content like this. It's just that Las Vegas media outlets haven't been covering this story and this angle on any regular basis lately. I don't know if there haven't been enough developments for them or there's just not enough interest on their potential new Major League Baseball team. That established, the local ABC affiliate, they recently did a whole miniseries called Stealing Vegas, and that's what we're here to break down. By the way, Stealing Vegas? Are the A's stealing Vegas or something from Vegas? Shouldn't it be the other way around, like Las Vegas is stealing the A's from Oakland? I totally get the stealing reference, like baseball, but there might have been better, catchier names for a segment. Anyway, here we go. We're talking steal in Vegas now. The Oakland A's on the move. Local officials say it's a deal that's been brewing for years. Brewing for years? What about the Peralta site and Howard Terminal and Fremont before that? Yeah, you know what? Maybe speculated, but really brewing for years. Now that it's getting closer, brewing for years might be a stretch. Okay. I'm not going to pause every two seconds, I promise. That's right. And now locals are voicing their opinions on whether Major League Baseball should come to Las Vegas. Well, tonight, reporter Brian Horwath gets insight into how locals view the deal that would allow the A's to play ball on the Las Vegas Strip. The local perspective, that's what I came here for. I think any time that there's money involved, everybody's going to have their opinion. Three hurdle after hurdle to bring the A's to Las Vegas. After airing our series of special reports stealing Vegas about the Oakland A's proposed move to the Valley, Channel 13 is hearing from you, the locals, and getting answers. Have people been contacting you, you know, saying, hey, we want the A's or we don't want them? Well, I have to tell you, not only have we heard from our locals. That's the mayor, by the way. But we hear from around the country. Our responsive people we get this. A sticking point for the stadium deal was helping to finance a ballpark for the team, which locals say may not be the best fit for Vegas. When she says like this, does that mean some really good moments and some really bad feedback? Seems like that's what she was suggesting there. I'm seeing money that is being just blown on another billionaire who would like a new toy here in town. They've had one of the worst years, plus they've, they, every year they keep trading the good players they've developed. State Assemblyman Ruben De Silva, representing Clark County, said he was skeptical at first too, and he needed to be convinced. I wasn't a direct supporter of the, uh, of the stadium deal when it first came out. I was vacillating and I needed to get more information and hear from my constituents about this. I would love to know what sold you on it. Despite efforts to keep residents in the loop, some feel like they were sh Wait a second. Sorry, sorry, I'll rewind it, but that's an Aviators game. I'd love to look up the date and check the attendance on that. Was that another one of their sellouts? Their good old-fashioned sellouts? But I digress. Despite efforts to keep residents in the loop, some feel like they were shut out. I don't think the legislators were or the legislators were listening anyway. I mean, they voted however they wanted. In a letter sent to lawmakers, Las Vegas resident Tom Schroeder wrote, This bill feels very rushed and pushy to get done, like the athletics want you all to overlook the details over it. Mayor Carolyn Goodman, an advocate for pro sports in Southern Nevada, says many don't know that the A's conversation actually started years ago. Again, I, this makes the politicians look good like they've been on this for a long time. And maybe there have been loose conversations, but to what degree and to what serious nature that actually brought us here? This has been a pursuit for a long time. And back about three years ago, I think it was, uh, we did get a call from the A's. After years of talk and Las Vegas proving it can handle big time sports, lawmakers put together a stadium package to lure the A's to build a diamond in the desert. And I don't want to keep harping on the Las Vegas has proved it's a pro sports town. Like, it's a great entertainment town and events town. And events is probably the biggest and best thing they do. They know how to put something on as a spectacle, like the Super Bowl that's coming up or even F1, despite all of the inconveniences and costs and all that stuff. When it actually happens, you'll probably go, wow. Same thing with the sphere that just opened. But my point is, as it relates to pro sports, 
They've had the Golden Knights for six years, still living in that honeymoon expansion phase, and they've won a Stanley Cup. They've been to two in just six years. That just doesn't happen anywhere else. I'm only saying I want to see how Las Vegas reacts when they go through the lulls of sports franchises and fandoms because it happens. It happens to all uh, pro sports markets. We've, we've not yet seen how this market looks when tourists aren't crazy about it and when the locals especially aren't crazy about it. That's that's. I'll leave that one right there. We took a, a long time to deliberate this. You know, this is something that just didn't happen over the legislative session. Okay, I'm glad he said that because the legislative session, the special session was like seven days. There was not a lot of deliberation there. In fact, it was very much negative and then it twisted very positive. There's a look inside Carson City right there. The stadium bill did not pass in the regular legislative session. There you go. I just told you that. Forcing the governor to call for an extra inning showdown. During the session, the public was able to weigh in using the Nevada legislature website. Uh-oh. It wasn't good. Which at times revealed over 80% against adding another sports venue. And I give the ABC affiliate here, Channel 13, credit because this was being pointed out by so many people outside of Las Vegas, but largely, for whatever reason, ignored in market. It kind of goes against the maybe local narrative or the, you know, the Homerism narrative. I'm just saying, you know, this report is showing all sides of it. And maybe we'll see fully all sides of it by the very end. Jeremy Aguero, an analyst now <laughs> consulting for the A's, says opposition is normal for... Hang on a second. I just want to point out, this is something that when I used to work in local news and things of that nature, we would do this fake shot. Hey, Jeremy, can you walk through the door? We'll get a shot of you looking like you're working. So... <laughs> Here's here's that show. sports venue. Jeremy Aguero, an analyst now consulting for the A's, says opposition is normal for a high profile project. If you're ever dealing with anything that's important on a legislative or community matter, there's going to be people that are opposed. Yes, but if those people have a legitimate reason and legitimate questions and concerns that cannot be like directly addressed, not, you know, um, beating around the bush, like directly addressed. If you can't do that, then that's not normal. And that's an important part of the process. Here's another letter submitted to Channel 13 by Boulder City resident Richard Reyes. It reads in part, quote, the proponents of this legislation, organized labor along with lobbyists from the Oakland Athletics Organization, do not have our state's best interest at heart. Is that a fair take for someone to say, look, the, the public really didn't have a say on this or enough of a say? You know, there were hours of public comment. Uh Whoa, there were like five hours of public comment, three of which took, uh, took place on Memorial Day. While the Golden Knights were playing a Stanley Cup playoff game. I have listened to, I kid you not, I kid you not, probably close to 100 hours of public comment here in Oakland and Alameda County on the Howard Terminal Project and everything A's related in the last handful of years. There might have been five total hours of public comment. And at that point, all the legislators, they tuned out, they walk away, they don't even listen to that. So I don't really want to hear that I mean, I, I, I observed, I, I lived through all of this way before the legislative session with the Oakland side and the, and the Nevada side. And to say that the public had their say and they really got, um, uh, they really got stood up for, that is absolutely not the case. Let's go back here. You didn't have a say on this or enough of a say. You know, there were hours of public comment uh, that occurred relative to this. Debate and questions that happen either inside or outside of the process, it was as extensive as any project I've ever been involved with. With the stadium expected to be built where the Tropicana Las Vegas now stands, many locals still aren't sold. We do still get a lot of complaints about why Tropicana. And I wonder if it's preserving the historic nature of the hotel or the location's not great. I know a lot of locals, I mean, this is old news. They still don't like the strip versus something more accessible for them. Why on this strip? There you go. Move it somewhere else. There you go. Because people have to get around. They have to get to work. They would like to shop. Why not put it at a different part of Las Vegas that could reuse the revival? I don't think the south end of the strip is an area that needs further traffic. I like that person's aces. I see Las Vegas aces like uh, 
sweatshirt or hoodie there. It's a true sports fan. Congestion and job loss. But not everyone disagrees with the move. We talked to locals at a Las Vegas Aviators game who said, When the A's get out here, we'll be at pretty much all those games, you know. But uh, yeah, we're, we're really excited. I'm very excited for Major League Baseball to come to Vegas finally. And you know what? Like, <laughs> I don't want people to think, like, seeing these fans, like, they do exist. There are baseball and sports fans who are excited about this in Las Vegas. There's just not many of them. And considering how many people are fighting in Oakland to keep the team versus how many people in Las Vegas are clamoring to get the team, like, that ratio is so one-sided and lopsided, it's, it's not even funny. And let me also say this. As you take a look inside an Aviators game there in Summerlin at Las Vegas Ballpark, what is the future of that? Do you realistically think that it's going to be in a great business shape with a major league team playing the same time of year during a similar season? And if you could go see the New York Mets on the strip or go out to Summerlin and watch a AAA game, like... Again, you saw the attendance for whatever game that was here before. There weren't many people there. What's it going to be like with even stiffer competition? I know the the Aviators' ticket prices and free parking, that's going to win a lot of people over. Maybe that takes away from what the A's are trying to do. I don't know. So I can't wait for it to happen. Gets a second inning call from Bill Madlock. Bill Madlock, um, 15 years in the Major League, four-time National League batting champ, won the World Series with the 1979 Pittsburgh Pirates. Legend. Yeah. Madlock is a Las Vegas local and a mentor to some of the Valley's up-and-coming athletes. There you go. While he supports the athletics move to Las Vegas, Good. athlete parents tell him with a professional franchise headed our way, they'd like to see an emphasis on education to set local kids up for success. Woo! Still want the team here, though, because that's the main thing. And I get that, but if, if you ask Bill, like, do you want any team? I mean, if I said, do you want the Pittsburgh Pirates to come out to Las Vegas? Yes, of course. He, I, think, I don't know that this is A's specific and he's hungry for the A's. This is somebody who is like, would you like this to come here? Of course the answer is going to be yes. They think it uh, help the community, help the players, and help the kids uh, uh, and, and everywhere. You know, there are people who say, well, well no, that money could have gone to, to other places, to education for the homeless. To them, you would say what? Uh, I'd say that, uh, you know, I think it's the total opposite. I think that this was a, a great investment by the state into a diversifying their economy and bringing a major asset, a tangible economic asset uh, to the city. I'm not sure, though, if the question was answered there. Are you, are you addressing some of the problems you have? And he's saying, well, no, this is a way to make more money. But to then go back and fix the problems? <laughs> I, I missed that one right there. Aguero agrees. He says adding another premier sports destination to the town will pay dividends for years to come. But again, like it's Jeremy Aguero's job to be hired to show the numbers that reflect making things happen. It's no different than on a pregame show when I want to make a player look good. I could find five stats and numbers that say, hey, look at their on-base percentage the last five games. I know they've struck out 12 times, but they've also walked this many times or whatever. There are wins above replacement. It, it, you can frame a lot of things up, and of course that's what Jeremy Aguero is, is going to, to have an opinion on. Are the A's right now uh, working towards, you know, being a part of this community? They're in town. They're engaging. Um, they are doing all the things they can do to responsibly and respectfully prepare uh, for that move. I have every expectation that the A's are going to um, meet or exceed every promise that they've made to this community. We could find out if the A's relocation gets approved later this year. Commissioner Manfred says he hopes the owners will vote when they meet November 14th through the 16th in Arlington, Texas. If you want to voice your opinion on the A's move to Las Vegas, you still can. But Here we go. Showing up for public comment during a city council or county commission meeting, or you can send a letter to the assembly member or senator in your district. We have a district map in this story on our website, ktnv.com. Reporting from the studio, I'm Brian Horwath. All right, Brian. Uh, nice piece there. Again, I just uh, thought that was an interesting look on what they're seeing down there, what they're saying down there. I don't know if there were any new revelations in, in that piece, but 
I can just appreciate that um, they didn't go the easy route, which was to not ask the hard questions. I think some hard things were addressed right there. Uh, you made it here to the end of this video. Thumbs up on that. And don't forget, subscribe to this channel so I can definitely see you back here next time.